Representative Aiken represents the mainstream policy position of the Republican leadership in Congress right the now. Main, Time and again. He has. Uh, he does. You know, I can reference the No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act, which attempted to redefine rape that not only Representative Aiken co-sponsored, but also vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan. The most recent bill that they put forward on the federal level, the D.C. 20-week abortion ban, also had no exceptions for rape. And so actually, while he is completely out of line with the American populace, he is completely in line with mainstream Republican thinking within the leadership of the party. Well, if you're, talking, no, if you're talking mainstream, Mitt Romney has uh, denounced those comments. He said they're inexcusable, they're insulting. And on that issue of no taxpayer funding, it's fair to say, isn't it, Paul Ryan says that about a whole raft of projects. It's, it's not just this. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but the fact is that it's not just about funding. They have attempted to redefine rape in law after bill after bill after bill that they put forward on restricting abortion rights. And so the fact is that they are on this path. It's mainstream within the leadership in the Congress right now. And so really this the, the solution is three part. One. Uh, Representative Aiken has proven that he is not fit for public service. And I'm not just talking about stepping out of the race. Right. I'm Ma talking mainstream about the Republicans fact that he's in seem to agree with that, actually, don't they? Mitt Romney agrees with that. Well, yes, that's true, but they have n no mainstream Republican has gone forward and said that he should step down from Congress, nor that he should be removed from the Science Committee, which he's on, if you can believe it. So he's not fit for public service. This is bigger than a race. This is about the fact that he shouldn't be in Congress, period. Two, another thing is that the Republican leadership as a whole needs to be held accountable for his comments and also for the fact that they continue to try to redefine rape. And three, we need to consign the militant anti-abortion rights movement that is peddling this terrible idea that a rape does not cause a pregnancy and a whole host you, of other untruths. We need to send okay, them back to the let, history books. Do, do you think at this stage, particularly as we are heading into a, a, obviously a, a presidential election, is this a helpful debate? to have, not least in terms of a debate about women in the U.S., or is it really not better to say, this man's way out of line, he's out of kilter, let's move on and have a proper debate? Well, this is absolutely a proper debate to have, and I'm very grateful that we're having a broader conversation about the role of women in society today. It's a wonderful thing because women aren't equal yet and it's time. Young women are impatient. It's absolutely disgusting that, for example, uh, about two in five college women will experience a sexual assault while they're in college, making it a concern almost on the level of, will I be able to get a job in this I, terrible economy? And so I welcome this discussion. It should continue regardless of whether or not he steps out of the race. And um, we need to be, hold him accountable so he's out of Congress as well. I, I suspect it will continue. Erin Matson, thank you very much.